An expert on children's perception of media says she doesn't doubt the suspects believe the character of Slender Man is real. And Madison's own police chief says the internet is playing a part in an increasing amount of child violence. Greg Newman is here, talked with both of those folks, and has you covered with that side of the story. Yeah, most of us were influenced by movies, TV shows, and books growing up, but a former UW-Madison psychologist says the internet is very different because it's always there and the content never ends. The faceless, tall, eerily long-limbed humanoid clad in a black suit and lurking in the background emerged on an online forum as a pair of photoshops and a half dozen lines of text. That's how the centuries-old legend of Slender Man started to explode online, according to this documentary short produced by UW-Madison lecturer Andrew Peck. If you're talking about a supernatural thing, um, which is also very difficult to prove wrong, then it's not unusual for an 11 and, or 12 year old to really buy this. Psychologist Dr. Joanne Cantor studied and researched the impact of media on children for years and says that combination of a supernatural being and the internet can be very powerful. You gotta take the girl's words um, literally. I mean, they got this idea and, you know, got the impetus from that with, you know, you don't know what they would have done without that particular website, but probably it wasn't quite this. As is so often the case with a lot of these horrendous, uh, horrific events, we sort of see a copycat phenomena at several levels. That's what concerns Madison Police Chief Mike Koval as both a cop and parent. Even though this is very rare, it's important for parents to know what kids are doing online and in other media and be engaged with them. Without that, Dr. Cantor says children will be influenced by others in the virtual world. There's limitless amount of time you can spend. You know, you find a site you like, you can be there interacting with people forever. And with smartphones and tablets, it's easy for kids to spend all day looking up such things on the internet and much more difficult for parents to stop it as well. So what can parents do then? Well, you know, Dr. Kenner suggests getting in front of their kids, trying to find out what they're looking at, who they're talking to online as often as possible. Obviously, easier said than done right, sometimes. To do. All right, Greg, thanks.